We use polymers in a wide variety of applications, as we have seen. Too often, we take this for granted. We have these materials today thanks to the inventiveness, hard work, and, yes, luck of individuals like Charles Goodyear or researchers in companies such as DuPont or Dow Chemicals. Their success, to be sure, arrived at after many failures, are an excellent lesson for us and for our students. Circumstances surrounding the discovery of these materials or processes differ, so let us look at some of them and see what we can learn. Rubber is a substance obtained from the rubber tree Hevea brasilensis. Rubber is a polymer of isoprene or 2-methyl-1,3-butadiene. Natural and vulcanized rubber is soft and sticky when warm, hard and brittle when cold. For 10 years, Charles Goodyear searched for a way to make rubber tough and flexible no matter what the temperature. That was 10 years of failure until sometime in 1839 when he accidentally dropped a mixture of rubber, white lead, and sulfur on a hot stove. The resulting material was elastic even when it was cooled and could be stretched without breaking. And so, vulcanization was born. If we want to understand how this process works, let us look at the structure of rubber in more detail. Long-chain polyisoprene molecules may coil and twist around each other. Stretching the rubber straightens these coiled molecules. If stretched excessively, they may slip past each other and not return to their original positions. Vulcanization creates sulfur crosslinks between chains. These sulfur bonds prevent the chains from slipping past each other when the rubber is stretched. Thus, the added crosslinks make the rubber harder, stronger, and more elastic. All this due to a lucky accident. Synthetic rubber was developed under quite different circumstances. The short supply of natural rubber during World War II stimulated an active search for rubber substitutes. The most important type of synthetic rubber known as SBR rubber, is a copolymer composed of 25% styrene and 75% butadiene. The monomers are products of petroleum refining so that SBR can be made without having to tap rubber trees for latex. Rubber tires are made using a mixture of natural and synthetic rubbers. Carbon black, nylon or polyester cord, fiberglass, and steel wires are added to the rubber to give the tires extra strength. Other types of elastomers are used in water-based paints. Polyvinyl acetate, polystyrene, and styrene butadiene copolymers have rubber-like properties and are used as binders in latex paint. Polyurethanes form another class of polymer compounds. Let's first look at how these are synthesized. Those of you who have followed the series from early on will remember Mildred Tamor. She's here to show us how polyurethanes are synthesized. Each reagent must be weighed out carefully. The pre-polymer consists of toluene, diisocyanate, and castor oil. Glycerol and castor oil are added next. Once the reaction begins, these will form an extended polymer network with the pre-polymer. The mixture is stirred. Silicone oil, a surfactant, is added. Then the catalyst, tin octanoate. Again, the mixture is stirred. 
Finally, water, a foaming agent, is added. After the mixture is stirred, the polymerization reaction takes place. As the reaction proceeds, carbon dioxide gas is released, giving the product a foamy texture. Polyester triols and diols are used in the manufacture of commercial foams to make mattresses and cushions. And now that you have the cushions, maybe the next thing you want to do is cover them with fabric. So, let's talk about fabrics.